Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm gonna show you how to replace the CPU and clean the cooling system in your Dell Inspiron 13 7000 series. For this project you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, rubbing alcohol, Q-tips, a paintbrush, some high-quality thermal paste, I recommend using Arctic MX5 or Grizzly Cryonaut. And you may also need a utility knife and 1mm thick thermal pad. And I also recommend using thermal pads from Grizzly. I'll put the links to all the stuff down below in the description. Before we get started, I want to show you my CPU temperature in idle and under heavy load, so we could compare the results before and after. For CPU load, I'm just using the system stability test that is built in into IDA64. Ok, so let's go ahead and start by removing these 9 screws that hold the base cover to the casing. Now with those screws removed, you can grab the cover with your fingers and lift it up like so. Before you start working inside the computer, I'd suggest disconnecting the battery, especially if you're not confident in your skills. Next, we need to remove the fan and the heatsink. Disconnect the fan cable from the board and remove these two screws. Then leave the fan off the palm rest assembly. Next, we need to loosen these four screws in sequential order, as indicated on the heatsink, and then remove the heatsink from the board. So, let's start by inspecting the cooling system. This is the site of the heatsink where all dust and dirt begins to build up. You can use a paintbrush to brush out the dust, and then use a can of compressed air or blower to blow any remaining debris out of the heatsink. Now repeat the same process for the fan. Just give it a good blowout to make sure it's nice and clean. Also try to spin the fan by hand. It should spin easily and freely. If it doesn't, I'd recommend replacing the fan, the link down below. As you can see, this compound is already dry, and we need to replace it. Just get a cotton cloth or a wet wipe soaked in rubbing alcohol and wipe away the old compound. Then gently wipe off any remaining residue from the chip. You can also use a Q-tip to remove the remaining paste. Next, check if the thermal pad is not damaged or dried out. So if you need to replace it, simply remove the old pad and then clean the surface of the heatsink with rubbing alcohol. Next, we need to cut out a 7x12mm pad. You'll need a utility knife and high-quality 1mm thick thermal pad, the link down below. Finally, place the new pad onto the heatsink, and don't forget to remove the protective tape from both sides. Ok, so now I'm going to go ahead and apply the thermal paste. There's a whole bunch of theories about thermal paste application methods and which one provides the best cooling performance. The problem with some methods like the dot is that the thermal paste doesn't spread out evenly. So for this particular model, I recommend using the line or the spread methods. As you can see, the last method guarantees nice and even coverage of the CPU die surface. So apply the right amount of thermal paste to the chip and spread it evenly without any gaps. You can use a plastic card or an applicator that comes with the paste. Now carefully attach the heatsink and in sequential order tighten the screws. Install the fan and secure it with the screws. Then connect the fan cable to the board. Connect the battery to the motherboard. Put the cover back on and snap it into place. Finally secure the cover with the screws. So, the laptop has been running for about 20 minutes, and this is what we've got for idle temps, and this is under heavy load. As you can see, the temperature dropped to 82 degrees, compared to 91 degrees before the paste replacement. So overall, we got about a 10 degree improvement. So, that's it, I hope it was helpful, and thank you for watching.